Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles. I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup, Jordy. All while fixing it up for some pretty major cruising someday. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and please subscribe. Okay, so what are we up to? Uh, it's blowing pretty hard outside today, so a couple of things I wanted to get done outside uh, aren't on for today, but good news. I uh, got a nice shipment in. This is just a fraction of uh, the bus bars and terminal strips and stuff I need to carry on with the electrical project. So we're gonna go down into the forecastle and start on the main AC wiring. Fun, fun. To get down in here and start by taking out my old um, sort of <laughs> power panel here. As I think I mentioned last time, I have two circuits of AC and uh, about three circuits of DC. And uh, they're gonna, I'll relocate them up onto here or something because this is where the main panel is going to go if you haven't been following along. What I need to do is get some light going on in here. Oh, this is a bit lumpy. Now, with any luck, this mess will only actually have to stay functional for another day or so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. So here is the inner panel, uh, which uh, at great pain I determined would be this size. I've never actually held it in this location before because all this junk was in the way. But I imagine it's going to go about here. Now you can imagine the things you take into account for this. Do I put it flat on the hull? Do I put it vertical but parallel to the bulkhead? Do I put it vertical and angled with the hull? Do I put it vertical and perpendicular to the bulkhead? And pa where the heck does it go so that A, it's easy to work on and attach the switches. Okay, now bear in mind, this is the inner panel. This is gonna have all the bulk wiring on it, all the terminal strips and the um, uh, bus bar. But the actual panel, which is gonna have all the breakers and switches on it, will be out from that about three inches. So it'll look almost exactly the same, except again, it'll have a frame of Sapelli mahogany and out and then hinge up or hinge forward, neither of which I can do right now because of the charge I just put here. Uh, anyway, you can see why this is annoying. I wanted this corner to be as far against the hull as possible to maximize my depth. So I think it's going to go right about there. Basically perpendicular to the bulkhead, vertical with the bulkhead, but having no real relationship with either the deck above or the hull here. And I'll just make everything, oh, that's cheapers. Well, today is a great day. I finally sold the Perkins, the old Perkins, the new Perkins. For those of you who haven't been following along, I sold the Perkins that I recently bought to put in my boat. And because it didn't fit, it spent the last, oop, bit of a carpet under here for extra protection, spent the last several months sitting in the back of my truck, making driving it around a bit, well, doesn't really bother me to tell you the truth. I couldn't sell it, I couldn't sell it, but I finally just sold it, heavily discounted, to a really nice gentleman up in Euculet who's going to put it in his sailboat and sail the world. Now I just have to take it down to the trucking depot because it's going to get trucked up there and it's gone. Thank God. And the timing is really good because also this morning I got a phone call. The timbers are ready for the new engine beds. <laughs> well, first things first, I had to jump the truck. This Landover has electrically heated windscreens, windshields, which are super cool. Unless you let them, forget them, turned on. So yeah, dead battery this morning. Happily, ladies after this car was handy and we're off to the race. Let's go get rid of this engine. To go up to the loading dock. My mask failed. I guess it's, uh, I guess you don't get a couple days out of them. Anyway, fixed with a little knot. 
Too much mask information? Probably, eh? All right, let's get to it. And it's gone. It's not that I didn't love that engine. In fact, I'm really gonna miss not having a Perkins in the boat because I think they're beautiful engines, but it's just the end of a stressful era. An empty truck. Let's go fill it with timber. <laughs> okay, so yesterday got a bit curtailed just as I was heading up the mill to pick up the um, timbers. They called to say that they wouldn't be ready, which is actually okay because I'd also just got a message from um, the engine supplier that the engine is actually only now being loaded on a plane in the UK. So it's certainly another week or so before I'm going to have it here. So no great rush on anything. Let's get back to electrical because <laughs> there's plenty of that to be done. I think I've also decided that the front panel, which will be out here somewhere, uh, will open forward rather than up. Um, just to make it that much easier to work on it because of course working overhead would be difficult so it'll be hinged at the front and it'll swing forward uh, and which uh, will make it quite easy to work on because it'll be right in front of my seat here at the nav station so I'm gonna take advantage of this timber up here which I doubt you can see because it's quite dark and it's painted brown but it's part of the modified version of a uh, shelf uh, timber uh, monks do it a little bit differently, but anyway, we can get into that another time. But anyway, there's a heavy timber here. I'm actually going to screw the panel right to it, and that means it will be as close as possible to the hull in this corner, giving me more room inside the panel uh, for the depth of, of the uh, equipment that's going to go on in there. And I'm going to keep it perpendicular to the bulkhead, uh, so I think I think I'm really quite content with where this is going now. Yeah. I'm actually taking it off again temporarily because of a little oversight I'll share with you. Let's just have a little look. And that is right up here. Um, the panel is going to sit high up against this deck beam here. And the deck beam is painted. And it's going to be refinished when I redo the foxhole. And in fact, if you look here, you can see in an area where I rebuilt this hatch, um, I stripped it down to the Douglas fir and put some oil on it. You can see where I stopped working on it. So I think I'm going to have to do at least this little section right in here because it will be miserable to do it around the electrical panel when it's already here. So just a quick little tidy up there. a little idea and it should work okay I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this with this little uh, round over outer bit I can clean out those little coves uh, beads really on the edge of the beams much tidier than I can with sanding but there's a complication but let me show you okay so here's the profile I'm trying to create on the bottom of the beam it basically has a little notch and then a bead and then a little notch and up again now uh, that's pretty easy to achieve if you have the right bit and the thing about the way these bits are sold is about the bearing let me get it out of here and I'll show you Okay, I don't know if I can, you can see what's going on here, but the carbide cutting bit uh, has a shoulder at the top and a shoulder at the bottom. So yes, it would cut a shoulder down there, but it can't cut a shoulder at the top because the bearing forces it to cut a smooth curve at the top. So this bit is really designed to cut this. If I lower it into the wood, it'll cut this. But to get it to cut that notch at the top, I need a smaller bearing. And I assumed I'd be able to have one around here somewhere. In the old days, when you bought one of these bits, they threw in the extra little bearing for you because they knew you wanted to do that, at least sometimes. All right then, success, sort of. I found a couple of bits with smaller bearings on them. Uh, this one is the same brand. So with any luck, that bearing will work out just fine. Um, the downside of it is while looking around, I found not one, but two. More of the exact same bits I just bought. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let's get this one off of here. Ow! Oh yeah, that's a little better. Maybe that'll draw a little less blood. Okay. 
get this bearing off of here. There we go. Bearing, good. Let's take this one off. And with any luck, that will give me exactly the depth I'm looking for. Excellent. And let's put that right on to this one. Please be the same thread, please be the same thread, please be the same thread. Okay. Offset looks really nice. Let me just tighten it up and then we'll examine this properly. Okay, if you can look really close, you can see that the flutes, or the blades now, are proud of the little bearing. So when it cuts, that can sit in there like that and it'll cut that notch and the depth will set, will cut that notch. Let's do some tests and some stock. Looks pretty good. Okay, so it's got to be a little bit, little bit deeper. And a little tongue oil to make it pretty. This, of course, isn't the final finish. There's little bits of white still in here, but uh, I just wanted to have a little go at it. It'll uh, be quite a project when I finally get to do this. I like it, though. Okay, enough fooling around. Let's get back to work here. Okay. Okay, and now I need to create a little block in behind here. So I just made up a little wedge of mahogany, and I'll slide that in until it bites. Okay, put a screw through them both. And there we go. Nice, nice, nice. All right, so the inner panel is basically what I consider the power distribution panel. Uh, there's no breakers on it, there's no switches on it. What it is is just dealing with wires or wire management. Okay, to allow myself uh, a couple of stabs at laying this out, I'm just gonna put some uh, tape down the side that I can mark on uh, so I don't have to mark on the actual plywood. And uh, when it's finalized, then I can drill some actual holes, but I'd like to get this sort of close to where I want it before I make too much of a mess of the panel. All right then, well, it's tomorrow. And you can see there are no terminal strips or uh, bus bars on the panel here. And I spent an unbelievable amount of time uh, after I turned the camera off for the last time yesterday trying to figure out exactly how these were going to be laid out. Those of you who have been following along for a little while might be aware that I suffer from a crippling design need. I'm a designer and I have this belief, and I think it's well founded, that the more effort you make in design, the less trouble you're going to have in the build and the higher the quality of the end result will be. Okay, I'm not going to rant too long about that, but it can get out of hand and I can, as I said, get crippled by it to the point where I can't get anything done in certain things. Some things I can just fly through. Things like electrical. I, I love electrical to be super neat, super tidy, very maintainable, easily traceable. And to get that takes really good design, especially because it's a bit abstract. You're not sure of all the circuits you're gonna have. Um, little background, my father was in electronics. I respected that he cared a lot about design and he had an expression, a bit morbid, but it was called kill the engineer. I don't know if it's universal, maybe some of you engineers or designers have heard it before, but what it really means is at a certain point you have to stop designing because engineers and designers will perpetually design until they're stopped by some means and that's usually budget or constraints or a boss or whatever and uh, I need something sometimes to make me just stop and you know what it is it's you it's Sunday morning my episode is already a day late and the reason it's a day late is because I just can't commit to screwing a few of these onto this piece of mahogany and if I don't do it I will have let myself down in a way because I'll have acknowledged that I just can't get this very simple thing done so by confronting it by talking with all of you about it I'm just gonna put these on it's about twenty dollars worth of plywood. If I hate the way it's set up, I'll change it later. Let's let's just do it.
Okay, I like it. <laughs> I'll give you one last explanation about what I've got going on here, and then I gotta call it a day, a morning, and what. So, this is the AC side, with the exception of that, DC side here. Hole will come in through here, all the AC circuits will come up onto here, drop the ground, the wire will come up, drop the neutral, the, the hot wire will come up, and all the, the hot circuits for AC will be on here. Then they'll all uh, pigtail off to the electrical panel, which will open this way, and they'll come to the breakers, which will be right on top. DC side, the reason it's up a little bit higher is because those wires come in higher, so it gives me room for the bundle, dropping all the grounds again, uh, dropping all the fixed loads, in other words, non-switched loads, coming through to switched loads, and then these two terminal strips are actually um, to look after all the helm controls, all the switches on the helm. They'll all come down here in pairs and um, pick up all the things that are switch loads. The reason there's a larger gap in here is because I will feed um, DC power from the panel, from the breakers, uh, to the inside of these two terminal strips. So these wires will come in here and pass off to all of these for the loads. And so the main um, pigtails out to the breakers come through here. That's all I can bear to think about right now. I've already done beer of the week <laughs> and it's only 10 o'clock. Well, hello and welcome to the Travels with Jordy Beer of the Week here live aboard uh, MV Jordy. Uh, we have a lot to get through, so I'll get started right off with the beer. Uh, it's from uh, one of our local breweries here, Moon Underwater, and it's called the Big Dippa uh, or Big D I P A. It's a double I P A, and it's actually called Plaskett's Big Dippa, obviously a reference to the Big Dipper uh, in the in the heavens, and it's a nod to the uh, Dominion Observatory here in Victoria. And Plaskett was the first director of it. Anyway, we'll see what we think of uh, this. Check this out, by the way. More on this in a minute. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, that was very nice. All right. The Big Dippa from Moon Underwater. Love the color so far. That looks just perfect. Well, um, if you've been patient, you know we're a day behind. Uh, so I'm awfully glad to be able to wrap up today and send you this episode. Cheers. Nice and hazy. It's really hoppy. It's even a little bit floral, a little bit citrus, but it also has a back kind of like, almost like a cast, you know, a little bit of a rum thing to, oh, which not everyone likes, but a combination of that with, with a pretty intense IPA, that is yummy. Mmm, absolutely fantastic. Okay, we have lots of cheersing to do. Is it cheersing or cheering? Anyway, Cheering. Uh, last week's t-shirt winner was George Pollard. So George, you've won a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. Get a hold of me and I'll make sure that you get that. Cheers to George. Mm. I had a really, really great week on Patreon. Thank you all so very much. Uh, Terry Parmeter, Carl Fissel, Mel Woodward, and Ian Bentley have all come aboard on Patreon and I'm so very, very grateful for that. Mm. Cheers to you all. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Also, a banner week with Amazon. Now, ha, you did see me open the beer with this Klein beer opener. I didn't even know these existed. Uh, some of you will know that I am crazy about Klein tools. I don't really know why. Probably because my father used them. My father was in electronics and uh, he always had these screwdrivers. So these are the screwdrivers, this very distinctive style with the yellow, clear yellow plastic and the rubber handle. I, I just love them and they tend to be pretty good. So very grateful for this gift. And from the same generous gentleman uh, came this Bosch uh, stud finder. Now you might say, Peter, you're on a boat. What do you need with a stud finder? It's kind of a house thing. Well, it's gonna be really, really handy when um, I get around to doing the haul out and to doing reframing because it's really important that I can find the old fasteners so I can line up um, where new fasteners are gonna go. And as I start to refasten, I'm gonna be able to keep tabs of where they are. Uh, so that's really, really great. And they both came from Mark Hain, who was uh, also very generous last week. So thanks again, Mark. I'm really grateful for all these goodies. Mm. And then even more amazing. Okay, these <coughs> teeny tiny little ball headed toggle switches. These are absolutely fantastic Kohlhurst 
um, toggle switches. And these are, I've chosen as the main switch to go in the helm of the boat. They'll go in that brass helm instrument panel. Very high quality switch, shockingly expensive. And I have to apologize to the two uh, fellows that sent me these switches. I see that shipping was also ridiculously expensive. So um, thank you ever so much. Uh, between the two of you, you sent me seven of these switches. So four switches came uh, from Harry uh, uh, Dressendorfer. Thank you very much, Harry. And three switches came from William M. So thank you to both of you. Mm. And cheers. And I just adore these little switches. Anyway, brilliant, brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of Klein. <laughs> Come on. Klein barbecue set. Yes, I was a little indulgent. When I saw that the um, the bottle opener was available, the next thing in line was a barbecue set also with Klein handles on it. Uh, it looks like it's actually beautifully made, super robust. I'm very, very happy with these. And uh, come barbecue season, these are gonna make me very happy. Uh, however, as I've often said, seems to be the norm. These came without any indication who sent them. So please, if you sent me these fantastic Klein barbecue set, let me know and I'll thank you properly. In the meantime, cheers. Mm. And off goes the bilge pump. All right then, well that almost wraps things up. Uh, all you need now is a word, uh, word of the week. And the word of the week this week is relief. I feel so much relief. It's strange, getting rid of the engine, the old Perkins, was really on my mind uh, because I couldn't use the truck right. I just, I didn't know how long I'd have it. I didn't know if I'd have to put it in. So anyway, long story short, if you'd like to win a Travels with Jody t-shirt, use the word relief in a comment down below and I'll pick it random over the first week of comments saying if I pick you, you win. See you next week. Cheers.